Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd ayya ala habita fillah Continuing on in our study of Shara Sunnah by Imam Babahari rahmatullahi alayhi We reached the point of the treaties where Imam Babahari said after mentioning Iman and after mentioning from uh, from Iman is loving the Sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in now mentioning other aspects of the creed or aqeed of Ahl Sunnah qala al muallif rahimahullah ta'ala wa sami wa sam'u wa ta'atu li a'immatil li a'immatu fi ma yuhibbuhu Allah wa yarda ومن ولي خلافة بإجماع الناس عليه ورضاهم به فهو أمير المؤمنين. إمام بابهار رحمة الله عليه said hearing and obeying the imams in what Allah سبحانه وتعالى loves and is pleased with and whoever is given the خليفه by the consensus of the people and they're pleased with him or they <coughs> pleased with him being the Khalifa then he is the Amir of, of the Mu'mineen he's the commander of the believers Qala Shaykh Rabi bin Hadi al-Madkhali hafadhullahu ta'ala in his explanation he said min usul ahl sunnah so he said, from the uh, asul or the foundation of Ahl Sunnah, again, Imam Barbahari, his whole treatise, Shara Sunnah, is talking about the creed and the methodology of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So he said, Min Asul Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, Ta'a, Ta'atu, Min Wallahu Allah, Amr Muslimin, Bima Yuhibbuhu Allah wa Yardahu. He said, and from the asul of Ahl Sunnah is being obedient to whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts in control over the affairs of the believers in that which he does uh, which is pleasing to Allah and those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves laysat atta'atu mutlaqa so he said that obedience to the leader is not absolute fin atta'atul mutlaq لِلَّهِ ثُمَّ لِرَسُولِهِ عَلَيْهِ صَلَاةُ وَسَلَامُ أَمَّا الطَّاعَةُ وَاللَّهَةُ الْأُمُورِ فَهِيَ مُقَيِّدَةٌ سَوَى وَاللَّهُ وَاللَّهَةُ الْأُمُورِ أَوْمْ غَيْرِهِمْ طَاعَةُ الْوَالِدِ أَوْ مُدَرِّسِ أَوْ مُدِيرِ هذه كلها مقيد بشرط ألا تكون في معصية So the Shaykh said حفظ الله تعالى in explaining what Imam Babahari said and making tawqid and affirming what he said he said that obedience is not absolute to the leader for verily obedience mutlaka you know that that is not that has no exceptions absolute obedience is for Allah and then his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam as for being obedient to the leaders then this is restricted or it is uh, it is restricted and this is the case regardless of whether you're talking about leaders or you're talking about obedience to parents or obedience to your teachers or obedience to your supervisor all of this is restricted by the condition that it is not in disobedience to Allah so that's incredibly incredibly important that we understand that that our obedience to the Muslim ruler <coughs> and obedience in f and and uh, to anyone in in that uh, in as far as you could describe it as obedience or following is in those things which are considered obedience to Allah, those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and is pleased with, or those things which are mubah, those things which are, they don't have a hukum attached to them, 
but they're lawful. They're lawful things, but they may not uh, have to do with uh, receiving reward for them or a punishment, but they are jayas, they are mubah. So, ahabatifillah, atta'a mutlaqa, this is for Allah and His Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam by following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But absolute obedience, even to your parents, even if your parents command you and they command you to do something haram, you must drink alcohol, we're having a family gathering, you must have a sip. Uh, you know, we want you to go to shirk and kufr. Whatever the case may be, that's disobedience to Allah, that's impermissible. You cannot, uh, and that shows you where it's restricted. That's a, there's a shirk, there's a condition attached to that type of obedience. And likewise the case with your teachers and your imams of community. And this is very important why we need to say this because if this is the case with the leader of the Muslims then and even your parents, then what about those people who take secret bayas to their Sufi imams or other imams in various communities that we have around the world? Akhwana Muslimin, they have the secret bayah. And many groups that hold the Aqidah, or not the Aqidah, I should say the some of the principles in Minhaj that uh, Ikhwan al-Muslimin hold <clears throat> and so they take the secret bay'ah so for example you might have a community in the, and they say well you have to take bay'ah to the Imam you have to take uh, a pledge of allegiance or an oath of allegiance to the Imam but that's not the case do not do that stay away from that because that bay'ah that is to the Imams of the Muslims meaning not just your particular com community or what have you, but those are to the leaders. And now, as the ulama say, not just in this time, but the ulama in the time when the uh, khula, when there was not just one khalifa or there was not just one unanimous Muslim leader, and and Muslim states were broken up and divided, that you it was required in the fuqaha recognize and acknowledge the fact that there would be bayah to the leader of that particular uh, country. And this is the case as in the old classical books you'll find, the classical books in fiqh, <clears throat> some of the more extensive ones that deal with uh, siyasa to sharia, you know, the politics of the sharia and the politics of leadership and so forth, like Imam al-Mawardi, uh, his book, uh, a great Shafi'i scholar, I, I believe he was Shafi'i, and he uh, wrote extensively uh, about this issue about leadership, giving and detailing the conditions for that. That one of the conditions is that uh, in order to be considered a leader that you would take the bayah, they must have a, a means to be able to protect you. So this is the case, what we see on the micro level when we see people taking bayah to certain imams or certain communities, this is in fact not permissible and this serves to divide the Muslims because if you take a bayah to this imam in New York and you take one to this imam in New Jersey and you take one to a particular imam in Seattle well what you've now divided the Muslims and you've made complete obedience to someone who may not even have the knowledge and they definitely more importantly they don't have the uh, ability to protect you. They can protect you on a micro level but when they commit crimes and try to hide those crimes in those communities uh, they can't even protect you, uh, obviously, from the police and the authorities that are over you in those non-Muslim lands or perhaps even in a Muslim land. So the point is, it's not to break into groups and sects and jama'at, but the bay'ah is to the imam of the Muslims. And in this case, since we don't have a unified leader for the Muslims anywhere, then the bay'ah in that situation is uh, in those particular countries, for example, in Saudi Arabia, they take bay'ah to the king. In, in Jordan, I'm sure they take bay'ah to their king. In Kuwait, to their, uh, to the president of Kuwait, or what have you. And in the various countries, they take the bay'ah, that oath of allegiance, so to speak, to the leader of their, uh, of the country. Because it's a serious matter. Why? Because uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, Ya yuladina amanu, ati'u Allah wa ati'u rasul, wa ulil amri minkum fin tanaza'atum fi shayin farduhu ilallahi wa rasuli, in kuntum tu'minun billahi wal yawm al-akhir, thalika khayran wa ahsanu ta'wila. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem in Surah al-Nisa, uh, O you who believe, 
obey Allah and obey the Messenger. And those charge and authority over you. And if you have uh, you disagree over something, then return it back to Allah and His Messenger. If you are believers in Allah in the Day of Judgment, and that is uh, the best, uh, you know that that is the best uh, for you. Ahabatifillah. This ayat shows us clearly the importance of uh, Muslim rulers and that we should be obedient to the Muslim rulers in as far as they are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning in commandments which they uh, command you to do disobedience to Allah you do not obey them in those acts of disobedience and in those things which are lawful and those things which are from the shar aslan then there should be no dispute that you have to be obedient because you have to be obedient to Allah and His Messenger وسلم. and the way we are ob obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by following His commandments in the Quran and the way that we're obedient to the Prophet وسلم, is we are um, ob obedient to the Sunnah and following the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah وسلم. by following His Sunnah then that's obedience to the Prophet وسلم. and the way we're obedient to the leaders is we are obedient to them in as far as they are obedient uh, that they're commanding us with aspects of the Sharia so the issue arises what about us in the West and in non-Muslim countries as Muslim minorities well of course we should respect the authorities in those countries so don't be like those people who are extreme and say no hey, they're not Muslim I don't have to respect them at all no they you don't have any power and authority in that country and you're a citizen of that country you have to comply with the laws or you will face the consequences so if you think that you're doing something righteous by disobeying the law well, when you end up in jail or you end up arrested or you end up shot or you end up whatever the case may be uh, you have no one to blame except yourself but in fact obedience or following the rule of law as long as it is in compliance with the Sharia. So, of course, you don't do things which are disobedient. If the government asks you to do something which uh, Allah hates, they say you must commit adultery. Every man must do this. Well, that, that's not the case, but I'm just giving you an example. Or you must smoke weed, or you must whatever. Those, that's disobedience. You don't have to be obedient in disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But instead, you should follow the rule of law and be respectful of the law and those who are... Uh, leaders uh, over you in authority and these these issues become quite complex with uh, some of the issues that we face in this day and age and those are issues as far as ironing out details and with uh, many of the things and new issues that we're beginning to face then those issues are reserved for the major scholars so be cautious of people who give you fat fatwa about such and such and such and such but rather return these fares as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Ya ladina amanu wa ati Allah wa ati rasul ul al amri minkum fa inta naza'tum fi shay'in faraduhu ila Allah wa rasuli in kuntum tu'minuna billahi wal yawmil akhir dhalikum dhalika khayran wa ahsanu ta'wila return it to Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam return it to the Quran and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us by saying uh, and ask the people of knowledge, ask the scholars if you don't know. So if it's something you don't know, and it's these major messiah, even it's not just for any scholar to make fatwa about these major messiah in Nawazil. You should need really, these issues are preferred to go to the major scholars, those kibar or ulama. So myself personally, in those types of issues that we really want detail about those issues, then those issues I feel comfortable that myself personally, this is for me, in going to uh, the major scholars of Saudi Arabia that have an established panel of major scholars, not even any of the scholars, even as many scholars I love and I respect and I take knowledge from and I take knowledge in most affairs, but not in all affairs because some of those issues are above their manzil, above their uh, state status in knowledge because and, and require extensive research and those ulama that have the experience and time and that is their duty with regards to that and the knowledge and the grayness in their beards uh, to do so so these kind of issues those major masail and life and death masail really you should return it to those ahlan for that those major scholars because we've heard of situations where people have lost their 
relatives because of fatwa, because they went to people who were knowledgeable, who were ulama, but they weren't ahlin for that type of fatwa, and their fatwa even went against the major scholars. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and forgive them and bless us and bless them and bless us to be with ilm al nafi rizqan tayyib wa amal al while we're on this, let's go to the next point that Imam Barbahari, rahmatullah very briefly what he said. He said in the uh, 31st uh, point, Qala Mu'allaf rahimahullah ta'ala, Wala yuhil li ahad, and you beat Layla, Wala yara anna alayhi imaman, birrin kan o fajirin. Imam Barbahari, rahmatullah said, it is not permissible for anyone to stay a night uh, without uh, an imam, regardless of whether he is righteous or wicked. And that is an incredibly important point when we look at that. That ibadah by Imam Baba Hari Rahmatullah is very important and we need to, to take a minute and, and analyze that. He says, so it's not permissible for anyone to stay a, uh, an evening, you know, to basically sleep even a, an, an evening uh, where he is not tied to an imam, meaning he's, he doesn't have allegiance to an imam of the Muslims. Uh, regardless, he said, birrin o fajirin. A righteous or even a wicked Muslim leader. As long as he's still Muslim. This is the point. He's still in the fold of Islam. And this is substantiated by authentic texts of the Prophet والسلام, And you can go back to Sahih Muslim for countless ruwayat and narrations of the Prophet والسلام, showing us The Prophet والسلام, said, uh, Hearing and obey, being the Muslim leader, and that which you love, and that which you hate. As long as he doesn't order you to do disobedience to Allah, and if he orders you to do disobedience to Allah, then there's no hearing and no obeying. And then there's so many other narrations which illustrate for us. And especially you'll find it in Kitab al-Imara, or the, the chapter of, of leadership in Sahih Muslim. You can find that in the English translation as well. And you'll find extensive uh, ahadith in that you should not rebel against the leader and not go against uh, rebelling against the Muslim leader as long as he's still in the fold of Islam and as long as he still establishes the Salat and he doesn't have open disbelief, then you should refrain from that. And this goes against the methodology, the madhab of the Khawarij uh, and those modern day groups, the neo takfiris and these other groups who... Uh, they cause facade and wickedness around the earth. Wallahi, run when you hear these people calling you to so-called jihad and so-called this and to do this kind of attack and do this kind of action and do this kind of amaliyat. A'udhu billah. Wallahi, we have so much fitna in the dunya now because of these people. And of course it doesn't rest exclusively on them. There's many political uh, there's many complexities to these issues when we talk about Iraq, when we talk about Afghanistan, when we talk about uh, Syria. We talk, uh, talk about many of these places where we have this kind of wickedness being spread. It's almost you can hardly find a Muslim land where there's a lot of peace and stability in this day and age. Alhamdulillah, in Saudi Arabia there is, uh, in some of the other countries, some, and some of the non arab countries, some. There's some level of stability, but everywhere from Nigeria to... Uh, Pakistan to uh, uh, to Yemen to wherever you find turmoil and you have these groups who have a goal they want the Sharia they want the hukum of Allah but they rebel against the Muslim authority and so okay let's take your argument for those who make takfir of certain leaders and let's say if there are disbelievers even with that there's conditions for rebelling against those in authority and you must have the Qudra and it's not about blowing up people and it's not about killing people in hospitals like they do in Yemen like they've done in Yemen these takfiris blowing up crowds car bombs in public places killing people look what they did in Egypt and now recently in Egypt another car bomb and daily in Iraq another car bomb and now we have the new advancement of ISIS and these other groups and we just have folder ikhwan fillah it's folda. And a lot of it stems from rebelling against the leader and not having the ability, if it is a non-Muslim leader, that's proven that they've left the fold of Islam and they fit those sharut, those conditions are not there. 
You don't have the ability. You don't have the qudra. You don't have the... And you don't have the right minhaj because you're killing and slaughtering women and children and old people. No one has stability. People can't go to the souk. They can't go to the marketplace and buy halib for their children. Children are being having their limbs blown off. Look at what's going on in Syria. Even though it was a wicked, tyrant, shaitan, disbeliever. Bashar. At the same time, look at the facade now of just those protests of going against the leader. Criticize the leader because he had such a heavy hand in dealing with that. He didn't play. He said, oh, you're going to protest? Well, no reforms. I'm taking your heads. He took their heads. Then what? And it just caused more brutality and a cycle of brutality. And I'm sure the average Syrian would love to have peace and security. They would love to have their children in, a, in schools. They would love to not have any more lost generations. Look at Somalia. Look at many places. Rebellion of Habitifillah there's rarely any good in these things. And all of these issues, they go back to, when you get to these complex messiah, they go back to what? A maslah wa mafsada. The harms and the benefits, they have to be weighed. And the ulama speaks extensively about this. Ahabitifillah. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ uh, showed us the importance of not going against the leader. Uh, and this is also... وَرُوِيَ مُسْلَمْ فِي صَحِيهِ عَنَ بِنَ بَاسًا وَرَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَنْعَنَهُ مَا نَا رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم قال مَنْ كَرِيَ مِنْ أَمِيرِهِ شَيْئًا فَلْيَصْبِرْ فَلْيَصْبِرْ عَلَيْهِ فَإِنَّهُ لَيْسَ أَهَدٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ خَرَجَ مِنَ السُلْطَانِ شِبْرٍ فَمَا تَعَلَيْهِ إِلَّا the Prophet ﷺ said, which as is collected in Sahih Muslim from the hadith of Ibn Abbas He said that the Messenger of Allah ﷺ said, whoever dislikes something from his leader, whoever hates something from his leader, then be patient upon it. Because there is no one from amongst the people who rebels against the Sultan. Don't blame the Salafis and don't blame the Salafi creed and Salafi minhaj and Salafi aqidah for saying no to rebellion. Because it stems, our aqidah, our creed, our minhaj comes from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Khairan nas qarni thumma alladheena yalunuhum thumma alladheena yalunuhum. The best people is the first generation, then those, my generation, then those who follow them, then those who follow them. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam laid a minhaj, a madhab down for us. And he said it. He salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi said in Sahih Muslim, if you don't like something from your emir, then be patient upon it. Because there is no one who rebels against the sultan, the leader, even a handspan. Even a handspan, abitillah. Does that mean just by sword? Or does that mean protesting? Online protests? Online petitions? We want you to do this, Amir. We want you to come down off this. We want somebody else in your place. Any kind of rebellion, any kind of protest, by the tongue, by the hand, by the sword. فَمَا تَعَلَيْهِ إِلَّا مَا تَمَيْتَتِنْ جَاهِلِيَةِ Whoever does this, and they die upon this rebellion, then they die the death of Jahiliyyah. أَحَبَتِ فِي اللَّهِ وَاللَّهِ If we only went back... What did we say in the beginning? What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in Kitab al-Kareem? Ya ayu ladhina amanu, ati Allah wa ati Rasul, wa awli amri minkum, fa inta nazatum fi shayin, fa rudu ilallahi wa rasooli, in kuntum tu'minun billahi wa liyum al-akhir, thalika khayrun wa ahsanu ta'wila. O you who believe, this is addressing you as a believer. Ya ayu ladhina amanu, ati Allah wa ati Rasul, obey Allah and obey the messenger. And those charged in authority ab uh, amongst you. If you disagree over something, then return it to Allah and His Messenger. And we already told you. Return it to Allah is what? Of course, in dua, communicating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through salat, but returning in, to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran. 
and his messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam, how? Through his sunnah. And this is from the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasalam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam said, for the yasper, he didn't say make YouTube videos and get the people excited and get yourself entrapped, get yourself in this trouble and get yourself in that trouble, cause fitna for the community. It's not what the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said. No matter how much hamasa, no matter how much excitement you have in your chest about it, we're all saddened by what we see around the world. No one likes bloodshed. No one likes to see suffering, regardless of who's suffering. But especially we don't like to see our Muslim brothers and sisters suffering. What's going on in, 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 in Congo and in, in the Central African Republic? They just slaughtered, I think, 50 Muslims in one day. And in Burma, the Buddhists are slaughtering the Muslims as well. We're not happy with that. In China, they're being oppressed. Everywhere. We get excited. We feel saddened. But we have to go back to get Return it back to Allah. Return it back to the Messenger of Allah. There's a time and a place for everything. And there's a preparation for everything. Prepare yourself with Iman. Come back to Allah. Stop getting involved in, in folda, in chaos, in madness, and rebellion. It only leads to destruction as we've seen in many countries. And Allah knows best how the, the end result of some of those places, when they're going to finally get stability. Look at Iraq, how long it's been going on. Syria, Afghanistan. Egypt is, is we don't know what's going to happen. You know, we hope that it's going to be stability. Libya, there's no stability after even removing somebody like Gaddafi. Look at, the, the people are just fighting amongst themselves. All the different secularists, Muslims, this group, this jama'at, tribes, it, it doesn't cease. It's better to have a tyrannical ruler, especially if he's a Muslim, with stability, than it is to have instability with no leader. Or someone even worse. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with Aum Nafiras Kan Taywa Aum Lam Tukabinan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be Ali Kitabi La wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbi wa sallam.